Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all my friends all across the globe today. My name is Leaf, and it is always such a pleasure to welcome you guys back to Sugar Pine Zoo. Now, yes, we are back in here, and we have a double feature today, so we are doing two completely different things over here. We are doing not just one, but two features of this entire section over here. So first of all, we have a little bit of a cafe that we're doing over here, a little bit of an open top cafe. I want to do something very outdoorsy, not just because I am awful at interiors, but also because I just felt like, you know, we are in this beautiful pine air. I want to be able to breathe it in, you know? And of course, it's such a beautiful day out right now. We got to get everyone outside, except when it rains and when I turn the rain on and everyone runs towards closest shelter. But with that being said, we're doing a little bit of cafe and I forget, I think it's Chuck's. I call it Chuck's Cafe. Because it's like woodchuck, and woodchucks are kind of like, you know, the beavers of the hills. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I don't even know what I'm building anymore. What's this? This is just a bunch of faux rocks. But no, I'm doing some more planters over here just to keep it nice and beautiful. And also using Kai's Pathing Mod to fix that up. By the way, Kai's Pathing Mod, I always like to state, it does work. Um, if you're trying to load into a zoo that has used Kai's mod in the past, um, it'll still work if you try and load into that zoo and you don't even have the mod installed. So it's just a wonderful building tool that I highly recommend. But of course, we need to put down some nice little trash cans over here, covering them up nicely. I want to integrate them right into the wall because that seemed like a good thing to do. And of course, framing our little chuck over here nice and center as you see them when you walk down like the little pathway you can see this little cafe eating area i use a couple of things in here i think i use creative games is uh kitchen set and i also use wyatt andrew's um shade structure well it's not even shade structure it's an aviary structure but i use it for shade so uh that's the t sis uh, I, don't, I don't really know but nope that's what i use for this entire build i can't really think of any other blueprints that i use as always, I try my best to write them down and make sure that you guys know who I'm using and where I'm using it. So, of course, I just always like to, you know, emphasize on that stuff. Don't be afraid to use blueprints. Listen, I know a lot of awesome builders out there who, you know, they build everything on their own. Like, even Estan does some amazing stuff like that. Simply Savannah in particular. Her stuff is always custom. It looks fabulous. But there's nothing to be afraid of, of using someone else's stuff to make your own zoo. And you know what? That's exactly what real zoos do. They consult, like, architecture firms. They consult, like, you know, city planning firms and stuff like that in order to develop the best facilities. Because if you just let a zoo trust itself, then, you know, sometimes you may end up with something that doesn't really work too well for the guests. So just always be sure to learn your advantages of where to take stuff and when to take it and if you can't make something yourself change it like even what i'm doing right here i'm using the grill that uh creative games made and i am making it in my own so i do a complete custom like countertop i make everything completely different because it was a little too big for me and i want to change it up a little bit more and of course here we are just adding a little bit of glass to it making it nice and covid friendly well not covid friendly covid safe because we do not want to be friendly to covid covid is bad but here we are just making it feel a lot more organic in here and of course right here i was like yeah um how are they gonna actually buy the food so i actually include a little bit of a cash register right there and i was also like you know what this looks nice but there's no like centerpiece over here so of course i want to do a little bit of an aviary kind of shade structure and i was just actually using these in um a little bit of a secret park i'm working on with uh mr concord forge hello um and you guys will see a little bit more of that when we have more stuff to show on it it's going pretty good so far, but we just need to sit down and really hammer down stuff. We came up with the idea of that park as, like, 
the one part we will both finish because as you guys know Kalahari wasn't really finished Total Modded Island wasn't really finished Blackstone Zoo wasn't really finished now that's a little bit of a throwback right there but anyways we are actually using some birchwood over here you know not to derail the subject or anything but we're using some birchwood to give it a little bit more decoration I felt like it was really cute just have a nice little woodsy theme because you know it, it kind of feels like a pseudo beaver uh dam uh, I, I don't know, I think that's kind of cute in that regard. It just looks pretty neat in the end. And of course, here we are working on the stars of the show this week, the seals! So yes, I am using the gray seal from Aquatic, can you believe it? Um, so gray seals are actually found in North America as well as Europe. And I wanted to include these guys over here to have a little bit of a double header for underwater aquatic lifestyles. So, using them over here, it was a little bit of a challenge to get it to all work out right. You may be able to tell that the path kind of seems like it's acting a little impossible for in-game standards. Again, that is Kai's mod at work. You're just able to do so many wonderful things with it. I highly recommend it. But, of course, we are doing a little bit of work around the actual tank itself. Nothing crazy this time around. It's a very down-to-earth seal habitat i think it came out pretty good in the end i don't know i just really like it and like the path leading up to it this place is really starting to feel like a zoo and that's why i really realized really realized wow okay cool um right after i finish this speed build and you guys will see a few cinematic shots of like the entire zoo as a whole going through now um, it's shaping up really nicely, and I only started it yesterday. Oh my god, I love this place so much. But, of course, we are doing a little bit more rock work. Big emphasis on the rock work over here. I also copy over the same building from the sea lions. I just figured, you know what, if it ain't broke, why fix it? So I definitely do gun to use a few of those. But, here you see me try and do, like, a nice view and canopy over there, but it doesn't work out, so I just make it a squared off end at the end. Um, yeah, I just said end twice in the same sentence. That's wonderful. Thank you, Leaf. Uh, I also do something over here that's a little bit of like a sunken down area. I always love these. Just like little tiny places out of the way so that you can kind of relax and maybe stay off the beaten path a little bit more. And I'm not even sure if I might open that up so I could have like, you know, maybe even more people be able to see the underwater viewing from that end. But, for the time being, I just cover it out with some, like, wood panels and stuff. I think it comes out pretty nicely. Um, it's very clean, I'll admit that. Of course, leading the staff pathway back there. Again, not really going to have an emphasis on staff facilities and realism going forward. Just because, well, realism, quote-unquote, uh, hyper-realism. That's why I like to say when, um... You start to get stuff like, you know, backstage coolers and stuff like that. Yeah, that's not really my style. I love seeing that stuff. Don't get me wrong. I love seeing that stuff. But that's just not me. That's not my style of building. And I'm not going to try and lie to myself that that's not my style of building. Uh, you can see, definitely, I just copied it over. Why not? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? And, of course, the foliage is what ties this entire area together. It's what ties this entire zoo together. And working in a taiga biome, it's so fun. Like, you get to have these nice, beautiful, tall trees that tower over your entire landscape. It feels so fun. And having, like, this little spra splash, wow, this little splash of aspen yellow over there, it is such a wonderful thing to have. And just making sure that everything looks nice and natural. And I actually do something very fun over here. You guys might be able to tell from the thumbnail. Hopefully, if I actually use that. I don't know. I'm really bad at planning, if you guys can't tell. But I do this little bit of a rock shade structure. And this was my... My way of getting around doing like you know another you know I'm trying to think of the word here the organic shades shades yeah it's just shades yeah that's a word thank you leaf great job great job you're excellent commentary I must say so um, but no I want to do something a little bit more natural make it feel pretty in line with like the aquatics that we have going on over here so I instead opt to do something a little bit more rocky have it be like a nice little rocky outcrop and it actually sets itself up to be a nice little pedestal for a sea lion statue as well as some seal statues going right up it so I don't know I just really do like that in the end it just seems so neat I don't know I really do like it it feels so natural I of course do a base with the faux rocks and then I cover it up with the tiger rocks right above to give it a little bit more of a natural coloration just combining the two really does help 
even like in any other zoo, combine two types of rocks instead of one, and you're bound to have a beautiful looking product in the end. I cannot recommend that enough. But of course, oh, where am I? I forgot what I even did at this point. Yeah, just making sure that, yeah, literally what I just recommended, combining the rocks and making it look a little bit more natural. And here we are doing like the exterior of the habitat. Nothing crazy, of course. I wanted to keep it relatively simple because the seals don't really require a lot of land space. They pretty much have all the land space that they need, but it's the aquatic section that they really love. And just watching them swim around and stuff like that, it really does reward itself in the end. I really do love it so much. And the seals love it too so you know who can come really complain you know and just watching them do their thing just making sure i know what i'm doing and adding these rocks in here these work so well together uh number seven and number four i believe those are like the perfect rocks to use in conjunction with one another and i don't know i just really do love it but of course moving on here we go doing stuff building 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 yeah i'm losing it if you guys can't tell it's very late in the day for me right now so of course my commentary really isn't the sharpest um i'm surprised i haven't moved to like pee pee poo poo jokes at all but you know what maybe maybe if i record any more today i'll end up there but you know we're just filling in the gaps over here making sure some uh rock work is being accounted for making sure it looks nice and pretty uh, just making sure everything feels nice and natural, but also having a little bit of realism in here, just this twinge, we do a twinge of realism. And you can see me actually try and do some shade structures over there. I forgot whose blueprint those were, but um, I didn't actually use them because it felt way too obtrusive. So maybe I'll go back and redo it, but in the meantime, I'm adding some grasses and foliage up above to all the habitat, really, to make it feel a lot more natural, make it feel a lot more welcome within the area itself, just having those bare rocky outcrops. It doesn't really do much for immersion and stuff, but having all these plants in here, making sure it's nice and lush, making sure it feels like it's been here a little while it really does help it in the end and also adding these faux rocks on the bottom over here doing a little bit of ceiling work nothing crazy but making sure it feels a little bit more um bumpy bumpy yeah that's a word bumpy um yeah perfectly great commentary <laughs> but here i am doing the rest of the work over here copying over the fences from before from the sea lion habitat and just making sure it all flows nicely over here and they actually presented themselves in the perfect way down here for me to kind of sink them down and continue it down there so i could have this be nice and flat over there oh my god i did not want to do anything special over there i had the idea to do something like a cave but having just did the semi-exposed rock structure back there, I was like, screw that, I am not doing that whatsoever. But here we are nearing the end of this all and adding the final touches. I add the moss over here and I also added it to the beavers from before. Just making sure everything looks nice, making sure everything looks pretty in the end. And I hope you guys do enjoy the little bit of b-roll that I'll have going forward. This was a really fun build and I really do hope you guys are enjoying Sugar Pine Zoo. It's so fun to finally build in here. I was just saying earlier that it feels like the inspiration is finally back. And I'm just happy that it's back because I love building in this game so much. This pack is really showing me what I am best at building in this game and what I love building for in this game. But anyways, that's it. I really do thank you guys for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to have you guys here. And you know what? I cannot wait to see you guys in the next one. I hope you all have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Take care. And I will see you guys in the next episode of Sugar Pine Zoo. There we go. I didn't mess it up. Have a great one guys. Bye-bye.